If you grew up or lived in the 1970s, then you realize it's one of the grooviest decades around. It was before the internet, and times were simple, but times were good. The 70s are more than just bell-bottom jeans and bell-bottom pants, and today we're going to discuss some of the things that happened in the 70s, and hopefully it brings back some memories. The Brady Bunch was a huge hit in the 1970s, and with three girls and three boys of different ages, almost every kid had a crush on someone that was on the show. The show was too perfect to exist in the real world, but somehow it resonated with kids in the 70s. CB radios were mainly used by truckers, but they crossed over into mainstream in the 1970s, and even moms and station wagons wanted to have their own handle. 10-4 and Roger That became popular slang of the 70s. Of course, kids had to cover their ears when some of the truckers were talking and telling jokes. Macrame was something that you saw a lot of in the 70s, and it took over houses everywhere, from hanging plant baskets to towel holders. One of the more popular items to have was an owl for some reason, and it was made out of macrame, of course. The colors of the 1970s included avocado green, banana yellow, or neon orange. You could find these colors on clothes, carpet, car interiors, appliances, counters, or even furniture. The round ottoman seats became strangely popular in the 70s. Most were meant to be used as footstools, but kids would often stretch out on them or curl up on them for cat naps. It was also fun to spread out and pretend that you were Superman flying high through the sky. But who could resist trying to jump around on them or even over the top of them? Evil Knievel was one of the super popular things in the 1970s and so were his toys. He was always trying different stunts and it usually led to kids in the neighborhood building ramps and seeing if they could jump over so many Tonka trucks or, God forbid, other kids. The lunch boxes in the 1970s were tough, and they were meant to protect your peanut butter and jelly sandwich from bomb blasts. Plastic or material lunch bags of today just wouldn't have cut it. The best thing about these old boxes is they came with your favorite characters on them. Could be Superman, Batman, Evil Knievel, or one of the many others that was out at the time. You weren't cool unless you had one, and what you had said a lot about your personality. 1976 was a bicentennial year, making the people across the country super patriotic. Clothing, parades, fireworks, Revolutionary War reenactments, and more took over the nation and occurred everywhere. Back then, it was cool to wear the red, white, and blue. One of the biggest scams of the 1970s was pet rocks. It was a hot item for a short time, and many kids wanted them. The funny thing was, most kids never even felt foolish about having them. As quick as they came in, they went out, but that wasn't before making the inventor of the toy a millionaire. In the 70s, it seemed like everyone's mother was selling Tupperware or Avon products. And if they weren't, then they were going to Tupperware parties and bringing home the goods. These containers came in the traditional avocado green, yellow, and orange colors of the time. They were super durable, and not even a tornado could pull that lid off. Tang hit the market in November of 1970, and they marketed their instant beverage as a nutrition of choice for astronauts everywhere. The problem was, Buzz Aldrin, the second man on the moon, said he wasn't even a fan of Tang. The taste was vaguely like oranges, but for a while we all wanted to drink the beverage to see if it made us smarter. The 70s was really about going all out and having lots of flair. Cars were no exception to this rule. Interiors came in the traditional colors of the time period, which some may argue is better than the plentiful black of today. But the outside of the station wagons also had some extra appeal with the wood paneling. It wasn't actually real wood, but it was a realistic looking wood that was actually vinyl siding. The good thing about that is you didn't have to worry about wood rot or termites. Back in the 70s, comic books and magazines were much more popular than they are today. One of the great things about them were the irresistible ads in the back part. Sometimes it was a toy or hatch your own baby chick. One of the more popular things for kids to get was sea monkeys. The picture painted them as sort of a fun, happy, mythical creature. But you would quickly learn your lesson in advertising when they came because they looked nothing like the picture. They were actually strange brine shrimp. Not exactly the best pet a kid could have. 
The 1970s saw its own version of the delete button and it was called liquid paper or whiteout. If you made a mistake on a letter or school assignment, then no problem. Just grab the liquid paper and paint a spot over that mistake. Of course, this was not instant and you had to wait for it to dry, which felt like forever. This would lead to everyone growing impatient and they would start blowing on the paper. It did speed up the process, but they looked ridiculous at the same time. When it finally dried, there was a good chance you lost your train of thought. Aluminum cans in the 70s were completely different than how they are today. For starters, they really were more like a cylinder, but the biggest difference was on top. In order to open the can, you had a pull ring which would tear open a small wedge shape on top of the aluminum can. Sometimes kids would bend these pull tabs and make necklaces out of them, but most of the time they were just thrown down on the ground. These pull tabs were all over parks and in waters and swimming areas everywhere. Injuries would then happen when people would accidentally step on these pull tabs. This would cut them really bad. This eventually forced the beer and soda cans to overhaul the pull tabs, making the world a safer and cleaner place. One story that happened in the 1970s captivated people like no other story before. Patty Hearst was the granddaughter of a newspaper publishing titan, William Randolph Hearst, and her story was something like out of a Hollywood movie. In 1974, Patty was kidnapped by the Symbionese Liberation Army. She then changed her name to Tanya and grew quite fond of her kidnappers. She ended up joining forces with her captors and then helped them rob banks in San Francisco. The story was so unbelievable that it left people wondering if it was really happening or not. Bicycle helmets were something that was unheard of in the 70s for the most part. It wasn't cool. It usually meant that you were a weirdo or you were recovering from a serious cranial injury. Back then, we just all learned how to take an injury on the old noggin. But some kids did suffer serious consequences of not wearing a helmet. Even if you could care less about politics, everyone was vaguely aware that something bad was happening in Washington. It was the topic of many dinner conversations, and the evening news was relentless on reporting each and every new detail. Seeing the disgraced Richard Nixon leave the White House forever and then board a helicopter was one of the most unforgettable moments of television history in the 1970s. As a kid in the 70s, you had only one opportunity to watch your favorite cartoon characters, and that was on Saturday mornings. If you missed it, then it seemed like you had to wait forever until the next Saturday morning rolled around. It certainly wasn't possible for a kid to watch every cartoon ever made with the press of just a button. Kids today will never understand the hardships of waiting for their favorite cartoon to appear on television. Before the days of cell phones capturing photos, many people had Polaroid cameras. They were extremely popular because you could instantly see the photos rather than having to wait for the film to be developed. This made family photos better, but at the same time you did have to wait for the instant photos to develop. Of course this could be sped up, or so we thought, by shaking the picture vigorously so the air drying process would speed up more quickly. Songs in the 70s were not always meant to be understood and it was anybody's guess what was being said. We didn't have Google back then to help us out with the translation. Take Don McLean's 1971 hit, American Pie. No one really knew who the jester was and why he was stealing the king's thorny crown. And just who was Jack? Kids had plenty of theories, but was the whole song really about Buddy Holly dying on a plane crash and McLean feeling sad about it? Smoking in the 70s could be seen everywhere. People were puffing away in offices, restaurants, airplanes, and most homes and public buildings. Secondhand smoke wasn't even something that people discussed. Between candy cigarettes and the Marlboro Man, even kids wanted to get in on the tobacco craze. TV reception in the 70s was a real struggle. In order to get rid of the distorted picture or snow, you had to adjust the rabbit ears or maybe even the knobs on the television. It wasn't a quick process by any means and people often tried adding foil or getting bigger antennas. And if you happened to adjust it while dad was watching the big fight and it happened to come in focus, well, that meant you were gonna be there for a while. Speaking of television, we really didn't have a plethora of channels to pick from. If you were lucky and in a good area, you had three on the lower numbers, and then you could turn the knob to you and maybe get three more channels on the other knob. 
Basically, that meant that you were dad's remote control. Television in the 70s was not something that was 24 hours a day. It would eventually go off the air at night. The time depended on the area you were in and what station you were watching. Sometimes the stations would have sort of an off-the-air patriotic theme or Native American. Other times it was just a display, sort of a basic screensaver, or maybe even it was just snow until the next morning at 6 a.m. when the station would resume. Long before kids were texting on phones, the only option available was writing notes and passing them on in class. And Lord help you if the teacher actually caught you doing that, because if she did, she was going to take that note and read it in front of the whole class out loud. And emails? No. There was only snail mail. We had to actually learn penmanship, cursive, and typing on typewriters. Then we would pay for a stamp and stuff it in an envelope so it would get mailed to the person and they would receive it anywhere from days to a couple weeks later. What kid didn't love fooling around with a typewriter though? Something else 70s kids paved the way on was selfies. No, there wasn't cell phones, but there were these cool photo booths. Everyone would cram inside like clowns inside of a small car and wait for the camera to flash three or four times. The results weren't always the best, but then there was no such thing as the perfect selfie. Besides, who really wanted to keep feeding the booth more money? In the 1970s, there was no Google or way of fact-checking, so kids believed basically everything. Remember when Mikey, the picky eater from Life Cereal, consumed too many Pop Rocks and Coca-Cola? He died, or at least we thought, by way of his stomach exploding. There were tons of different rumors of all sorts at the time, and we were all guilty of spreading them. As it turns out, most of them were false. If you look around today, kids have various hairstyles. Maybe it's parted to the left or the right, or it's a faux hawk. But in the 1970s, it was all about the straight-edged bangs. You know, the bowl cut, which is exactly what it sounds like. Mom would stick a bowl on top of your head, and then she would trim the edge going along the bowl. Even girls experienced this, at least on their bangs. It was the official haircut of the 70s. Heck, even Pete Rose and Dorothy Hamill sported it. Mechanical pencils are all the rage today, but in the 70s, wooden pencils ruled the world. But another essential school supply was the pencil cases with sharpeners or slide rulers. Even though you couldn't use them on test days, it still looked as though you were serious about learning. Everyone either had one or wanted one, just like how kids are now with iPhones. Silly Putty was huge and tons of fun. Back then, it was how 70s kids shared memes. You could copy your favorite comic strip from the newspaper and then distort it different ways by stretching it. Today, most newspapers use non-transferable ink, so kids will never experience the fun of copying their favorite comic strip. Worksheets or homework assignments passed out to the students in the 1970s classrooms were created using ditto or mimeograph machines. They had an unmistakable odor and the ink would come off onto your fingers. Saturday mornings were supposed to be about eating sugary cereals and sitting in front of the television watching your favorite cartoons. But somehow the schoolhouse rock started tricking us into learning math, history, and English without giving it a second thought. Their catchy songs taught us various things we couldn't have learned otherwise. Who remembers learning the branches of government from them? In 1975, Steven Spielberg released Jaws and it had people everywhere scared to death of the water. Not just in the ocean, but even lakes and ponds could have this man-eating creature lurking below. But if you did go in the water with your friends, it was hard not to pretend you were a shark attacking them for a little scare fun. Thanks to the Metric Conversion Act of 1975, kids were all prepared to start measuring things in meters, liters, and grams rather than feet, pounds, and quarts. It's hard to believe it now, but this really was a serious thing in the late 1970s, especially if you were a kid. Schools showed kids films that tried to win them over with the adventures of metric marvels. Kids today have no idea about the stress or fear about having to change to the metric system. Playgrounds in the 70s were built to last as well as build character. The equipment was unforgiving and brutal. Monkey bars and merry-go-rounds were made of cold steel that could break bones without mercy. And who didn't love trying to see if you could go all the way around on the swing or come off flying on the hard ground? 
It was also fun to spin the merry-go-round so fast that kids started flying and tumbling off onto the ground like rag dolls. Today, most people wear sunscreen when they're going to be outside for extended periods of time. Not only that, they wear high SPF versions of sunscreen. But in the 70s, it was all about trying to get that golden tan or sunburns in some cases. Back then, you could be outside all day showing lots of skin and no one ever asked you, have you applied sunscreen? There were even some people who lathered on suntan lotion or suntan oil so they could get even darker quicker. The 1970s brought us the best crime-fighting trio of all time, the Charlie's Angels. Girls wanted to be like them, and boys had crushes on them. Some were taken by Jacqueline Smith, while others only had eyes for Kate Jackson. But the vast majority of boys loved Farrah Fawcett. Did you have a favorite angel? The 1970s was all about short shorts and tube socks. Not only that, but it wasn't limited to just girls or boys. Everyone wore them. Styles for both sexes rarely ever align. And it may not have been the most flattering, but they sure were cool. Hitchhiking today is sort of frowned upon, but in the 1970s, it wasn't. If you didn't have a car or no money, no problem. Just stick up your thumb and eventually a kind stranger would pull over and offer you a ride. It was also more common to see people pulling over to help others change a tire or anything else that you might need. Nowadays, people seem to keep on going unless you're in a small town. Television in the 1970s was not the same as it is today. There wasn't an endless amount of channels or anything that could play on demand. So when something came on television that resonated with kids, it burned a permanent memory into their subconscious. How many of you can still sing the Sesame Street song or Rubber Ducky or maybe even the Oscar Mayer commercial song? In the 1970s, we became familiar with the galaxy far, far away. In 1977, we were introduced to lightsabers, the dark side, and of course, Darth Vader. Generations before had no idea of any of that, but nothing would be the same in the future as everyone is now familiar with Star Wars. The 1970s was just as dangerous then as it is today, yet none of the parents were freaked out over it. Kids played outside until the front porch lights came on and they rode their bikes all over the town. Stranger danger wasn't even really a thing, and many kids were never even warned about it. Usually, they were just out making new friends and acquaintances with people they didn't even recognize or know. That's going to do it for today's video on the 1970s. I hope you enjoyed it, and it brought back some fond memories of the 1970s, whether you were a kid or not. If you enjoy these types of videos, make sure you check out the 1970s toy video that I've done. As always, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you guys next time.